Okay, so now that we have finished our first assignment, the question is how does one export it? How does one turn it into a movie? The first thing I'll usually do is uh, to see the whole timeline. The shortcut is if I'm zoomed in because I was doing some work here and I used the scale bar, I'm zoomed in, to see the whole sequence on my timeline, the shortcut would be command right slash, or I say command question mark, because it's easier to see the question mark on your keyboard. Hold command and click the button that looks like that has a question mark on. It will show the entire timeline. Now, if say I was working and I had left an in mark and an out mark here, whatever it was, it's usually best to remove any marks. Um, if you only want to export a certain section of your timeline, let's just say the first few edits. I'm marking in and out. But when I export the timeline to create a movie, it will only export between the in and out marks. Okay? But I won't do the entire thing. So I would get rid of any in and out marks. And if E is to mark an in and R is to mark an out, to remove the in mark, look at the button below the letter E, which is letter D. You hit D, it will remove the in mark. To remove an out mark, the letter below the letter R is F. So F will remove the out mark. If I put the playhead on top of a clip and hit the letter T, so the E and R and T are making marks, E is in, R is out, T is to mark the total clip uh, between splices of where your playhead is situated. So to remove both in and out marks, look at the letter below T, which is letter G, and that will remove both the in and out. Okay? So again, E, R, E, R, and then T marks the total. D removes E. F removes R, and if you had a T, G would remove both in and out with one hit. Okay? So, again, I have the whole timeline and everything, there's no marks, and now I'm ready to go. So, now, so make sure that you, the last thing you clicked on was the timeline, because that's what will be exported. Hit File, you're going to output and export to file. Click on export to file. Now, we get this export window. And let's, at the top here, I'm, where am I going to export to? I'll put it on the desktop, OK? And so I can find it. Export setting, I click on this window. And I think the default was untitled. But that doesn't tell me anything, which makes me nervous. So I make sure I go to fast export. QuickTime NTSC, all right? Uh, there are all sorts of other things, but for the purpose of this uh, course, this would be easiest to be consistent with. I'll click on the word options because I want to know what else is there. And normally, it'll have two check marks. Use marks and include inactive audio tracks. Uh, it is making a QuickTime movie. I don't want to use marks. I don't want to include any inactive audio tracks and all that. So again, if I'm only planning to export a section of my timeline, I probably would use marks and use selected tracks, which means how many video tracks, how many audio tracks, okay? And But in this case, I'm going to make sure there are no check marks. Uh, the setting will be same as source, and I'll be using Avid Codex, which um, because this was imported, I will use uh, that makes it actually that's what makes it a fast export because I'm not converting it to any other kind of codec. We'll get into some of the other things later on, but for now, for this assignment, we'll use it this way. Same as source. Make sure Avid Codex is checked. Make sure you have video and audio checked so that we have picture and sound. The rest will leave as is. The color levels will leave at a legal range. The display aspect ratio will keep it to native dimensions. Then I'm going to hit save. That saved the option menu, and now I'm ready to save the whole thing. Now make sure the name of the file is tj underscore cut one and then your last name. 
and it'll be a .mov, a hit save. Uh, there already was there. I did this a little bit earlier to test it out, but I just replaced it. So now it's exporting same as source, creating a new file, and it's done. When that goes away, that means it's done. That's pretty quick. Click on Avid Media Composer, hide it, and then I'm going to hide. Um, I have my Google Chrome open. I'm going to hide that. I'm going to close downloads. And here is my TJ Cut One movie. Double click on it, and I always make sure that you play all the way through. And as I hear picture and sound. Now, the things I'm playing this with QuickTime Player 7 because my computer is set up to do that. Um, you may not have QuickTime Player 7 on your machine. So let me show you what will happen. Okay, there it is. So it goes 24 seconds. Good. Let me do it another way. Let me open with QuickTime Player um, 10. And so now it's converting something, okay? That is because it's converting from the Avid codec. So it will still play. And so same thing. So make sure you play it in real time. Make sure there's nothing strange. Things don't, um, that things do look correct and that you do have a cut that's less than 25 seconds. Okay, so there. Sucker almost had me. Now, this is a converted movie and the best thing would be to file and hit go to save. Okay? And save this one I can save to the desktop also okay so that's the one that you probably want to send to me um, and so now the question is how do you send it to me uh, there's a couple of ways but uh, let's try this first way assuming that you're a registered student which I believe you all are if I go to my gmail account and you can just go I just typed in gmail.com or mail.google.com and when you log in, up here in the upper right is a nine little dots. Click on that and go to your Google Drive. And in this case, I'm going to upload this file. Uh, if I go new, up, file upload, desktop, and I'll take the converted one, hit open, and it'll upload it into my Google Drive. The reason being is that then you can share that with me. Okay, so there it's uploaded. Good. So I have to find it. Uh, if I click on date modified, let's see if it brings up. Okay. Oh, I see, because these are folders, I guess. There it is. Uh, it's after the folders. Okay, so here it is. So with this TJ1 Cut Louis converted, I'm going to right click on this and click on share. Okay. When I go to share, um, the type of share that I want is, let's see, I want viewers. Okay. So I'm going to put, now you're going to put my name, because this is who's going to go to, Louis underscore wall at smc.edu. All right. And you can change the editor to viewer on the right. And up here, it tells you what's the difference. Editors can change permissions and share. Viewers and commenters can see the option to download, print, and copy. Okay. Viewer is good enough. Um, and then I can say, this is my action cut for DM post 30 Friday. Okay. So I don't have to, um, so you can tell me what class you're in. Okay, so there it is. There's the converted movie. All I'm going to do is view rules if I can see comments and suggestions. So hit send. And that's it. So on my end, when I go to my mailbox, here it is. 
um, it says that I have, I sent for myself my Gmail account to me and has shared the following video. There it is, TJ Cut One Louis Converted. And the note, let me show the unblock content. It says action cut for the impulse 30 on Friday. I click on open and here it is. I can play it if I want it to, or better yet, I'm going to download it so I keep track of everything. This way you're covered because there's an email trail that says that you sent it uh, whenever you did and I have it and I can download it and then there it is. So let's try doing that for these first couple of assignments and see how that goes. All right. Okay. 